Hello there, very good morning to you. Oh gosh, we're busy already this morning. Um, how are you? How's your weather? Where in the world are you? What time is it? What are you up to? That's bombarded you with a few questions this morning. Um, morning. Oh, let me turn that off. I do apologise. Now you know there's a bit of a delay. Um, so, good morning. No, stop it. Go away. Um, morning, Janet and Sheila on YouTube, Kim, Colette and um, all the regulars. Anybody new? First time you joined us. It'd be lovely to hear from you. Uh, morning, Nan. Christy, hello again from California. Shirley, um, breezy in Whiz Beach. It's a bit breezy here, but it's quite nice. But it's still warm. Um, who's first in on Facebook then this morning? Jean, hello, Elizabeth, Linda, uh, morning, and Co morning and Coco, Ruby and Coco say, Ruby, Ruby, Coco. Bobbin's got a bone on the lawn. She's quite happy out there today. Uh, morning, Jane, Mandy, Sheila, um, Janet, Lynn, Anne, Dawn. Now we're live on, sorry if I'm missing anybody. There's loads of messages coming through. Um, so, oh, Gary's just disappeared after, after he's dressed my set for me. He goes and puts the kettle on. Um, but I shall, I shall pass the message on. Uh, morning, Tina. It's 3 a.m. in Arizona, apparently, says Sally. You're up early. Or are you up late? Ah. Um, morning, Jackie. Oh, gosh, how busy are we this morning? Um, hello, Ariadne from Spain. Mary, hello there. She's not stopping long. Oh, no, that was a call from your daughter is far more important than a bit of sewing. Um, hi, Alison and Percy. We could spend the whole hour doing this, couldn't we? Um, we are live on Facebook, YouTube, and on my website. On the website, on Debbie Shaw Sewing, I can't actually see any comments at the moment, so I do apologise if you're there. There's always teething somewhere, isn't there, with these, with these lives. Um, yeah. <laughs> Julian's muted the Queen. Oh, in real life. <laughs> uh, right, oh, there we are on the website. Hello to everybody there too. Right, we're all sorted then. I've got some fabulous new fabrics to show you. Um, let me just explain a little bit if you are new, because I know there's a lot of you coming through. Um, I, uh, my website, Debbie Shaw Sewing, um, my, my daughter is actually managing now. She's doing all the buying and everything, and she has impeccable taste. Um, we've been asked for more dressmaking fabrics, and she's found the most uh, amazing fabrics from a, um, a UK supply. In fact, these are based in Ilkeston. Um, it's called Lady McElroy. Ilkeston is, is where, where I was born and where I grew up as well, so that's, um, that was quite nice. Um, but I can't wait to show you these. I am going to make a drawstring bag. Um, from some nautical fabric that we got on the website because when I saw it I just thought oh pyjama case I, I don't know why I just thought pyjama and that's why Gary's put a few nautical oh there's the little seaside bucket a few oh and nets oh he's been busy set dressing this morning um oh happy birthday share boo happy birthday to you um oh it's exciting any birthday share isn't it what are you doing to celebrate Going out on the town, because I think we can now, can't we? Hi, Ali. Oh, thank you very much. So, Sally, Ann, you don't want to know what's on the bottom of i um, still got my pyjamas on. Chilly in Nottingham. Oh, hi, Lisa. Bobbin. Bob. 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 Bobbin. Don't know what the fuss is about. Right, let me show these fabrics. I'm so excited. Um, so, look at this. Now this is a viscose chalice. Viscose is a, let me show you this close up. Um, it's a semi-synthetic, we call viscose, um, because it's made from wood pulp. Um, so, so I'm just trying to get your, your comments while I'm doing this. There we go. Um, made from wood pulp, so it's a natural fibre. Oh, and you've gone now. Where have you gone? There you are. Um, but there are a few chemicals used in the process of turning the wood pulp into a fabric. So viscose feels and drapes wonderfully well. It's cool to wear. It's breathable. It's washable. It makes the most beautiful clothing. I'm thinking blouses and dresses and full skirts and, and puff sleeves and things like that. But the chalice is a particularly fine fabric. So I'd say um, the equivalent of a cotton lawn, if you're familiar with lawn, is very fine. It's got a very dense but very fine thread, which is why you get this amazing drape. Um, so again, it's the most beautiful designs, really summery. 
um, and fantastic to wear. With viscose, any type of viscose, when you're sewing it, make sure you've got a nice sharp needle and make sure that your fabric is supported because it's very fluid and you don't want it falling off the table. Um, if you're making a larger item or if you're pre-washing your fabrics, try and dry them flat because the weight and the drape of the fabric could, could pull them out of shape. So those are my basic tips for sewing with viscose. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about prices, um, because there's so many I can't keep up with them but have a look on debbyshawsewing.com and that'll give you the details when you go to the home page underneath the video that's playing now there'll be um, new in I think it's called um, and they're in the new new fabric so absolutely fantastic premium quality visco chalice as is this one so this looks like a watercolour fabric to me again this is the visco chalice how wide is it? You're going to want to know, aren't you? Oh, all the details are on there, but it's 140 wide, I think, this one. And all of these are sold by the half metre. So if you wanted to make a maxi skirt and you needed a three metres of fabric, it'll all come in one piece. Um, oh, Lynn's just up the road. She's in Beeston. I used to live in Toten, Lynn, in a, in a previous life. A long time ago, that. Um, Linda it's gorgeous fabric and it, it's just it's really easy to work with it's just very fluid and very it moves a lot um, walking foot could help as well but um, it's well worth it the feel of this next to your skin is just absolutely exquisite you have to have a favorite don't you this again visco chalice so all the same types of fabrics how about this for a holiday blouse? Isn't that beautiful? I wonder where it is. Probably says in the description. Oh, Venice, isn't it? I may, I'd love to go to Venice. Ever been to Venice? That's on my on my wish list. Long weekend. That'd be nice, I think. I'd love to go there. Though so that's the three viscose chalices. And... Oh, daughter coffee runs soon, says Sylvia. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hoping for one myself. I've only had two this morning. Morning, Lisa with a spanner. Um, oh, the cat had three kittens on Thursday morning. That was the longest cat pregnancy ever. <laughs> um, we're making a drawstring bag. I'll show you the fabrics in just a second. I just want to show you these, these viscoses because they're beautiful. Now, this is the same company, but this time we're looking at cotton lawn. So just like with the viscose, cotton lawn has a very fine thread. So viscose made from wood pulp, cotton obviously made from cotton, um, but it's very fine. Now sometimes with lawn, it can be see-through, this isn't. So it's lightweight, it's drapey, love the design, that's so contemporary. And although we're saying, oh, we're buying these in, or Kim's buying them in, um, as dressmaking fabrics, because that's normally what you'd use cotton lawn for, there's no reason why you couldn't use that in home wares. Um, so if you're making a bag, you're probably going to be using interfacing, which is going to give it some stability anyway. And if you wanted to make cushion covers and things like that, I'd maybe put some interfacing, just like the lightweight dressmaking interfacing on the wrong side of it to give it a bit more stability. This one is it's quite, it, it doesn't feel like a lawn, if you know what I mean. So I'm not normally too much of a fan of lawn because it can be too flimsy, but this is quite a substantial fabric. So that's that one. And then finally, from Lady Macawa, this is Cotton Lawn again. They're very kind of of the moment, aren't they? These large flowers and the tropical kind of look. This one's got um, La Lune. So have the moon. Morning, Princess, morning star. Um. <laughs> Lisa's cut must have been huge. Um, and what else have we got? We've got hands with, um, oh, what do they call it when they paint the hands? Henna and jugs and butterflies and exotic flowers. So that again, cotton lawn, but it, it's just, it's lovely. It's, we wouldn't bring you anything less, I know, but sometimes when you pick up a fabric and you just think, oh, that is wonderful. Can't wait to make something with it. That's what you're going to feel here. Um, morning Janet. Oh, hi Marion, welcome back again. It's just very tactile, this fabric, sorry about this. Um, Anne's had to get her own coffee. I don't want to have a, a tease made down here, shouldn't I really? That would, uh, that would work. 
just a few more to show you so th these are um, different supplier um, but still equally beautiful fabrics so this one I've only I've only been allowed a little bit of this one um, this is a crepe de chine it's still very very lightweight slightly textural and it's got a bit of stretch in it as well so if you're making something that's quite fitted then you, I don't think you need to line this it's not see-through um, but it, it's it's a nice comfortable kind of stretch it's not like Jersey um, Lynn I would use uh, or Marilyn or Lynn whoever a very sharp needle a universal needle is fine but a sharp one so a, a new needle every time you use it um, oh happy birthday Sally for Monday but I do love this one I think I, I'd make quite a tailored skirt I think from this with the tigers but again if you want to do homewares bag making that's absolutely fine um, I did enjoy my time with Ruth thank you Bonnie it just wasn't long enough um, and then jerseys so dress making again this is pretty isn't it this is a cotton jersey so again it's incredibly soft um, very stretchy very comfortable very drapey but it's a quality um, so you're not going to get it going all knobbly and see-through so that I think would make a lovely loose tunic top um, I've got more jerseys nope we have for the first time broad jonglers but it's printed that is so pretty isn't it so I'm thinking there little girls dresses maybe sorry I'm just trying to find you again things keep disappearing off my screen me included um or frills or oh gosh it's it's this is one of those fabrics isn't it that takes you back in time it's a bit like um a, a gingham for school dresses um this is the kind of fabric that in the 60s my mum would make dresses for sunday school out of where you had to wear something for best but it's really pretty so i'm thinking maxi skirts again with this one with nice deep pockets in the sides or or pinafores or blouses and it's beautiful leslie okay naughty corner off you go washing up on a saturday morning you know the rules and wash up any other day of the week but not on a saturday if you don't mind um I do remind me you're there though later on because people get stuck in that naughty corner for weeks oh dolls oh janet that'd be oh for maddie that'd be nice wouldn't it mm. you've got some lovely ideas <laughs> sarah i'll get your labels printed out ready <laughs> Oh, some flowers. Oh, how lovely, Dawn. Uh, Sue, sorry. Right. Now, I've, I've just got a couple of bundles and this one to show you. Oh, uh, do we? Oh, uh, uh, do we have any quilters out there? You're going to love this. Um, cream on cream with little daisies on it. it well, it's kind of a white on cream. So a good uh, backing fabric or um, if you wanted to use this as a as a blender it's nice to have a little bit of a pattern in there so you haven't got just plain fabric so and that's a really nice quality too right we have some bundles um which are new for you have you seen before that we do the um perfect pairing we have so many questions um, from people asking which fabric we think would go with which fabric. And that's not a problem at all. If you've seen a fabric and you want something to coordinate with it, um, it it's always a risk, isn't it, when you're buying something online that the colours are going to be exactly the same. Um, so we do try and help out. If anybody does get in touch, you know, you can drop us an email and we'll, we'll try and help. Um, but we have had some bundles put together so that you know the colours are going to match perfectly to start with. So these are pre-cut half metre pieces. They are 100% cotton and 112 centimetres wide. So you get half a metre of each of those. If you order two, you'll get two half metres. So these are already pre-cut. But the yellow, it couldn't be closer to the yellow that you see in the flowers there. We've got rainbows, we've got flowers, we've got mushrooms. And again, I'm thinking maybe home wires, bags, anything for the kids' room. And it's bright and sunny and, and summery. Susan loves a bundle. I, I love a bundle myself, Susan. It just takes the, takes the complication out of ordering a fabric that you know, well, that you, you not necessarily match. Because um, sometimes, you know, even on, on our website, um, 
we do because Gary does all the photos um, on the website and it'll take a long time after photographing say a yellow fabric um, manipulating the picture on the screen so that it is exactly the same color as the yellow because you know what it's like different lighting conditions and everything make the colors look different so we try and, and color match exactly the pictures on the website but when you go for two together you just you just know that you're going to get the right colors so that's those again can't remember what they're called but have a look on the website on under new um, ah, De oh, she's shouting at me again. I'm making a drawstring bag in a minute. Stop rushing me. I'll be there in a minute. Just got lots of stuff to show you. I'm going to get a clonk with that spanner in a minute, aren't I? Um, this is lovely. We've got ditzy blue flowers. Again, both 112 centimetres wide, 100% cotton. Um, and the royal blue. Look at those. Isn't that fresh and clean? What are you going to make out of those? Oh, maybe something for the garden. Yes, we post to France Dawn, and if you go to debbyshawsewing.com, that's my website. Looking at the quilting on Half Yard Club, but not brave enough to try, says Shirley. Oh, I can't show you yet, but you know the, um, can't reach it, the, um, the block of the months that we do on the Half Yard Club. Um, you've got three, so we're not taking those down. So you, you've actually got three complete years worth of block of the months on the website now. And they're designed by my friend Melissa, who's an amazing quilt designer. Um, she's working on next year's. So excited. You, you won't see it till about November, but she's, uh, she made up a, a prototype and it's just amazing. If you thought the seminal patchwork from this year looks good, oh, just wait till next year. <gasps> One more bundle and we'll get sewing. Small flowers. Now these could have been paired with yellows, with lemons, with mint green, with, with dark green, with peach, but we thought we'd pick upon that dark red. And I think this one um, gives a very English country garden kind of feel, doesn't it? I'm not saying old fashioned, but a real classic combination. That would make a nice dress, wouldn't it, for Maddie? Oh, hello, Debbie from Debbie in Australia and Queensland. Thank you, Denise. Right, that's it then. That's it, new fabric-wise. So we will. I'll, I'll show you more on um, on Wednesday when it's. I mean, when, Wednesday's website Wednesdays. So we'll go into a little bit more detail about the website. I'm just going to see if anybody's there yet. If you are, I'm just going to refresh. If anybody's putting comments on the website, I can't see you. Don't know why. New website still shouldn't be too long. Why aren't we watching? Um, I know Christy. I, I just got. I had a moment of excitement when an email came through from Melissa the other day with the most amazing picture. Olivan, hello. Are you freezing on Facebook? I haven't had that at all today. I thought we were doing all right. Um, Jackie's had a parcel this morning. Lovely. Morning, Ginny. Okay, should we do some sewing? Um, oh, if you are on the website, have a look at um, bag feet. I'll show you these on Wednesday, actually, um, because we've, we've been out of stock for a while and all of a sudden we've got, we've got a few thousands of them. Um, so we've got bag feet in silver, gold and bronze, I think. Um, and those cat magnets, oh, I haven't brought mine up with me, it's in the house. Do you remember the magnets in the, with a cat shape? Lisa would love this. Um, and it's like got a suction pad that goes on the front of your sewing machine, so you can just put your pins on there without having a pincushion. Got those back in stock as well. So uh, have a look around, have a look at that sales stuff as well. I keep nagging you to look at that sales stuff because at the moment with Kim bringing in all this dressmaking fabric, we've got nowhere to put it. We need an extension on the warehouse at the moment. Okay, now this is the fabric that I'm going to use to make my drawstring bag, which has a bit of tape on it for some reason. We don't know why. Um, <laughs> so I, I knew you'd like that. Cat face magnet for your pins. Um, rat and bag handles have been on order for two weeks, Karen, so hopefully this week. Um, Krista, to attach the bag feet, you would make that there are some bag feet, I don't know if I was to come with, with um, 
like plates on the back of them a little bit like a magnetic snap so you push you make a tiny hole in the in the bottom of your bag push the feet through slip the thing over and then it's like a brad so you've got two sticks sticking up and then just bend them open ever so easy that's that's just how they go on it's really simple um hi Aisha from Kenya <laughs> right this is the fabric I don't know what it's a bundle again so there's half a meter of anchors and half a meter of navy blue um, but when I saw it, I just thought wouldn't that make a nice pajama case or something to hang at the back of your bathroom door to keep I don't know flannels in or maybe even a, a wash bag PE bag travel bag well, drawstring bags are really useful aren't they um, and this is I mean it's big as you can see um, and this is entirely made from the two half meter pieces. I think I had about that much left over from each piece at the end. So let me measure it for you. And then we'll get, so, oh, I, oh, I have a ditty for you too. Oh, do you want a, do you want a ditty first or a ditty later? Ditty? Ditty for anybody? We don't sell rivets at the moment, Colette, but um, I'm sure Kim will on to it. They'll be on to it. Hello, Samia. Uh, bonsoir, Madame de Beja. There's a comment for her, but I leave it. Okay. No, don't understand that. Um, good evening, Debbie. I love your... No. Is that something to do with books? I'm sure I can translate, but I'll, I'll have a look later, Samia. Ditty. Yeah, let's, have, let's have a little bit of a ditty then. Okay, so you ready? Poplin, lawn, batik, drill, burlap, jersey, crepe and twill. Most of these I have not met. Tulle, tuffeta, mesh and net. What do I want? What do I need? Wool, herringbone, dog's tooth or tweed? That's just the fabric. It gets duller. Let's talk about the choice of colour. Forest, pistachio, grass, chartreuse. I know they're all green, but which one to choose? Cerise, fuchsia, salmon, pink, rose, magenta. I just can't think. I'll keep it simple. I'll be all right. I'll just use cotton and only in white. Thank you very much. Just, just a little ditty for you then. There will be more to come. <laughs> Um, okay, so Lisa's showing off a French now. Um, I've cut two pieces of fabric from the anchors measuring 20 inches down by 15 across. So I should do that the other way. 15 by 20. Um, if you knew, I'll just explain that. Um, whenever you see measurements of fabric, it's always width first and then depth. So if you're buying a pair of curtains and they are 60 by 90 it'll mean 60 across that way 90 drop it's always that than that and if you're measuring something three-dimensional it will be width depth uh, length and then depth so it's always that one first then that one and then that one so this is 15 by 19 and two pieces of the outer fabric and two pieces of lining fabric and then, oh, oh, no, 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 I'm going to cut that down a bit. Um, then I've got one piece of fabric, so I'm going to put a pocket on the front of this. And that measures, let me rule it the right way round. Oh, it was the right way round. Um, let's go across first. Ten and a half inches across. And that is 14 inches down. That's going to be folded in half, and that's going to be a pocket on the front like so. I then have a piece of lining fabric which I'm going to make a flap with and that measures 8 inches by 12 inches but I will cut that down to size a little bit so that's going to make a flap that goes over the top of the pocket there and then I have two pieces of fabric to make a channel for the, um, the drawstring to go through and those measure, I've actually ironed those already those measure 13 inches across by two inches deep and I've also I haven't cut this down to size yet so I'll need to measure it later I've got some just quarter of an inch piping cord and that's what I'm going to use to make the drawstring Coffee. oh love oh yes don't ask if everybody wants one Anybody else? <laughs> thank you nice okay 
I don't know. It's it takes me so long to write a ditty because I write it and then I think, oh, that's not very funny. Um, then start all over again and it'll take me a while. Maybe there will be booking a book in the pipeline. You never know. What I was just thinking um, as I was... Oh, he's moved me cutting, Matt. Um, I'll, I'll just have to wing it. As I was showing you the fabric, can't find my scissors now. Where are my scissors? If I make the outer fabric half an inch shorter than the lining fabric, when I um, sew them together, the lining fabric will curl over the top by a um, quarter of an inch, and that will make a nice little border around the top. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, we have magnetic class, Margaret. If they're not on the website, then um, we need to add some more back in stock because we do definitely have some. So I'm just cutting half an inch off the top of that. Like so. It is coffee time, I know. Lucky lady. So we have this. So we will... Let's do the pocket first of all. Um, so I folded my fabric in half. Let's do that right sides together. Total tool fabric we don't have at the moment, Sal, I'm afraid. Um, so right sides together. And I'm just going to sew all the way around, apart from a turning gap of about three inches, just across the bottom there. It's gone again now, Lisa. Um, I'm not sure, Anne whether search press post to Algiers um, they, they do supply worldwide so I would imagine so but you'd have to get in touch with them I'm afraid because um, I don't know I'll, I can find out and let you know so let's just go around these three sides and I'm just using the edge of my foot as a guide which is about a quarter of an inch and my tension needs to go up a little bit Oh, my needle needs changing, it would probably be more like it. So this is my gap. Hi Jo, as long as you're not late, late, late. Oh, she's still in the naughty corner. Leslie, come out of the naughty corner now, I think you've been there long enough. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, these things happen. Um, all right, so around three sides there. And then I'm just going to put the iron on and I'll snip across the corners and then press it. I'm just going to re-thread my machine because I'll show you a look. Um, I'll show you a look. So the stitches are a little bit loose. I don't think it's the tension. It might need a change of needle. Let me have a look if I've got any. No, we'll, we'll back. Oh, what's that? Jeans needles. Better than nothing. While we're talking about needles and while I'm just changing this and re threading, um, I get quite a lot of questions about needles and different sizes and things. I thought on Wednesday um, we'd have a chat about machine sewing needles, um, but my favourite hand sewing needles are sharps. They're the only ones that we sell on the website at the moment. It, it's quite, um, can be quite confusing, can't it? Because there are so many different needles and they're, they're all named. So I'm talking about hand sewing needles. Um, so there's um, betweens and sharps and millinery and embroidery and chenille and oh, there's so many different ones in so many different sizes. I don't think it's important to have the machine, uh, the the needle with the description of what you're actually using it for, if that makes sense. Um, I like using uh, millinery needles, to be honest, because they're nice and long, but they do have a round eye. Um, so the eye could be too big for fine fabric, but I, I like sharps. These are the ones that I use. Because sharps are normally long and very slim and have a long eye. Some needles, the eyes are so tiny, I can't get the thread through. Um, Size-wise with needles, the larger the number, the longer the needle. 
Um, so size, oh sorry, the smaller the needle, got that the wrong way around. So size 10 is a small needle, short needle, and size 5 is the longer needle. So in these packets you get like a selection of lots of them. Um, but I like them because they're so nice and thin. Some needles, um, like when, when you buy uh, assorted needles, I'm not going to use half of them because they're just too thick for the fabric. Um, so let me just see if this works. So uh, uh, an assortment of short and long, but not of different thicknesses is what, is what I like personally. Uh, do that. That's better. Um, so a change of needle, we thread and we're fine. What we also have, I'm not a fan of these. Not a fan. Love the needles. Um, I don't like these packets because you do that and you do this and they'll fall out all over the place. And it's very difficult to get them back in again, isn't it? Or oh, those wheels, if you've had one of those before, you know, full of needles, they're brilliant. But very difficult to get the needles back in again. And you don't want them dropping out all over the place. So, how about a magnetic needle case? Look at these. So a magnet means they're not going to fall out. You can clearly see which needles you've got. Those are between the smaller ones. So, so shorter in length. They might be a little bit too small for me. That's the kind of size that I like. So yeah, we've got these on the website as well, but um, they come with one needle. So I would go for one of those and one of those, and then you've got all of your hand sewing needles sorted out. I'm a reckoning. Daylight just breaking in Florida. Morning, Elaine. Okay, let's snip across the corners. And then we'll turn this the right side out. Try a top stitch needle. Really, Christy, for everything. I, I'll be honest, I have top stitch needles and I don't use them because I very rarely use a top stitch thread, which are the thicker ones. Isn't it? I shall certainly do that, Christy. Thank you very much. Um, show us how to do buttonholes. Yes, of course I can show you how to do buttonholes. Do you have... I can show you later. Um, a computerised sewing machine or do you have a four-step buttonhole system on your machine? So I can show you how to do a buttonhole on um, a one-step buttonhole, which this one's got. I don't have a four-step button foot with me. So we can have a look at that anyway. I can explain. Right, let's give this a press. Let me iron. So where the hole is here, let's just fold the edges in. I'm not going to sew that closed right now. I'm going to turn this so that the hole is on the bottom. And I'm going to put a magnetic snap on here. And I got so busy talking, I should have done that first, really. Not to worry. We'll do it now. So I want to put a snap right in the centre. So I'm just creasing that to mark it. And where are we? They all tend to stick together like this. Um, the fatter part of the snap, which is the one with the magnet in it, is going to go on this side. So normally you do that before you put this together. Computerised machine, fabulous, Amanda. I shall, uh, I shall show you later. Um, just find a pen. What we'll do. So let's put this about an inch from the top. So I'm just going to draw two little lines each side, and that's where my snap's going to go. Um, so if you're putting this, you should really be putting this on before we're sewing it together. So in which case, I would crease the centre mark here, and then measure one inch down from that, and then sew the whole thing together. You distracted me again, you see. So I'm just going to make two little holes. I'm only going to go through one side of this. Have I got that on that? Yeah, so this is on the front of the pocket. So two little holes. Could use a sharp pair of scissors if you prefer. That goes in there. I could put a piece of fabric on the back to strengthen it, but you know, I'm not going to. In you go. Always make your holes smaller than you think you need them. And then we'll have the back on. 
Hi Nell. Okay, so that's the snap on the pocket. I'm just going to top stitch across the top of here as well because I think it looks nice and finishes it off. And I'm using a navy thread so it stands out quite nicely as well. Hi Kathy, nice to see you too. So that's the pocket, so let's put this onto the front. I'm not using any interfacing on, on this um, bag because I don't really think it needs it because it's all going to gather up anyway, so I'm, I'm not going to bother. Um, Deirdre, I don't have a four-step buttonhole um, foot to show you. I do have one on another Brother sewing machine, but I don't have it with me, I'm afraid. So maybe I'll see if I can get hold of that for Wednesday. I must write this down. I did bring my pad down with me so I can write down what we need to do. Um, okay, let's place this over the bag. Not too close to the top because the drawstring is going to go here. So we'll have it about there. So that will be centrally four inches from the bottom. So let's pop a few pins in here. I'm just going to write that down, Deirdre, because I'll forget. In air erasable ink, so hopefully that won't disappear. So, four step buttonhole on Wednesday. Right, so a couple of pins in here. Make sure that's straight. And then I'm just going to sew around the bottom three sides to hold that in place. <laughs> Lynn, if you've got if you've got fabric that you just have to admire, buy some more so you can actually use it. Um, let's do this. So I'm now sewing about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And again, I'm using a contrast thread. If you're a bit wobbly with your stitches, then um, use the same colour. As I'm sewing across the bottom, the opening is now closing. And back down the final side. Oh, you'll find everything on YouTube, Deirdre. Um, I'm sure somebody there will be doing buttonholes. Um, right, so that's that. And then we'll do the flap that's going to go over the top. So again, I folded my fabric in half. That's a little bit too wide. So I can measure it against the pocket. And I just want it about maybe three quarters of an inch, maybe half an inch bigger. So let's trim this off here. And I'm also going to round these two bottom corners. So I'll just do it by eye, but if you've got a circle template or a dish or a plate or something like that, you could use that to trim them. So the flap's going to go there. I will put the magnetic snap on in the right order this time. So this is the thin part of the snap. Uh, I can actually feel where that's going to go there. It's the same on both sides, remember. I'll have a seam allowance of about a quarter of an inch and I want to allow a little bit of room for the foot on my sewing machine to actually get round here. But you don't want the flap to be too far down that she won't be able to get in there. So I would say, set the centre, to put your snap about an inch and a half from the edge here. Um, have I got a pen that will, I've got a blue erasable pen on navy, that's not going to work is it? So I've got a chalk, that'll do. So I'm going to place this over there just like before. Oh, I th that's black, I can just about see the mark, I don't know if you can. Make my two little holes. I had no quick unpick, didn't I? I'll use scissors. So two little snips here. And 
then that's going to go on that side. On that side? No, on that. It doesn't really matter, as long as it goes on. So let's squish that through there. That goes on the back. And press those open. Myra's late, never know. <laughs> Can you hear a barking? Um, so now fold over right sides together, so with a snap on the inside, and we're going to sew around here, but leave a gap again of about three inches in the in one side, so I can turn it the right side out. And my little camera's not working. This this is my bob cam, and I tried to charge it up again this morning. It's not doing anything at all. Um, so I, I I need to invest in a new bob cam so you can see her. I put pictures on Facebook quite regularly. She's all better with her leg and everything now. I was saying that she was limping a bit this morning, but we went for quite a long walk yesterday, last night. Right, so again, just sew around the edge. And keep your stitches nice and curvy on the curves because this is the shape of the flap. So we don't want wonky curves. And there we go. And a little bit of a tip for you as well, if you have put the magnetic snap a little bit too close to the seam allowance, uh, put your zipper foot on the machine so you can get around it okay. I know, I didn't leave a gap, did I? I know. Um, where did I put that? That's chatting again for too long. <laughs> we do need a bob cam, don't we? I might have to put it outside though. She doesn't tend to come in here very often these days. Right, let's just let's just make a gap where I should have left one. And snip across the corners at the top. I'm going to snip into the seam allowance just around here. Only on the curve bit, just to help the seam to sit a little flatter. And again, just snip off that corner. And then we'll turn this the right side out. Margaret, you've missed me ditty. I did a, I did a ditty earlier. <laughs> I did a ditty earlier. It, honestly, if you don't know what a ditty is, that sounds like quite rude. Right, let's just push out these corners. There you go. So if you, if you have a turning tool, not too sharp that you push the, the tool through the corners, but the round end's useful as well for pushing out round corners like this one before you press it. So handy little tools. Um, Sarah, tips for corners. Just square corners. Always start with your needle down if that helps. Take your time as you're sewing around them. Um, curved corners are a little bit more tricky, but um, straight corners are easy. And then I, I always cut across the corners um, just to cut down on the bulk of the fabric. Not always necessary, but when I, when I went to college, um, I went to, um, I studied at the London College of Fashion like years ago now, um, dressmaking. And um, <laughs> we were doing, um, I think, pockets can't remember with flaps on them and um, we all started you know sewing the corners together and cutting across them and the tutor was saying why do you why do you keep doing that why are you cutting the corners off for that was a waste of time just you know, push them through and get on with it so not everybody does that got a bit of a telling off well, i'm just going to top stitch around this now just around the three sides not across the bottom Hello, Cathy in Maryland. That's uh, again nice. Oh, I should have done this in white, shouldn't I? That would have been a nice contrast. But nice even stitches all the way around, about an eighth of an inch from the edge, closing over the opening as, I, as I'm sewing around. And then back down there. Has to take me or something. Oh, gosh. Michaela, oh, I hope you're okay now. Right. Yeah, at least we're putting a zipper foot on with the, with the snap. Is um, it's 
a nice little trick so you can move the needle right over and away from it now. Okay, so I'm going to close the snap now. So flaps in the right place there. Loose thread there. Wasp me scissors again. And then just make sure this is straight. And I'm going to sew just across the top. So let's have a couple of pins in there, oh, right next to me. Oh, but I didn't know it was the Troopin' of the Colour today. Oh, but Gary's watching that, he loves that. Right, how to apply binding to a neckline. Oh, okay, we can, we can have a look at that, I think. All right, and then just sew straight across the top. Ow. <laughs> Take your pins out as you sew, otherwise you might get spiked. And that's that. So you could decorate it maybe with a button, but that, that's going to be the front of my bag. Um, now with these um, strips for the channel, all I did here was take my, my two inch strip, um, fold the ends under by, um, it's just over a quarter of an inch, and then fold the ends over again. I do like to use best press um, rather than starch. So if you've got the kind of fabric that uh, just won't crease, see this one's kind of opening up again, put a little bit of your spray on there. It'll dry very quickly and then it, it kind of stays in place, it creases really well. Um, if you haven't seen uh, Best Press before, we've got this on the website in two fragrances. Um, it's a starchless starch, so if, you, if you've spray starch before, you probably have, um, you can get like a white, dusty residue. So this acts in the same way, so it's great for sizing and it's great for stiffening your fabric like this, um, but it doesn't leave the white spray, um, white powder and it smells wonderful. It's, it's quite nice, even if you're not kind of starting, particularly with pillowcases. Um, if you give them a spray before you iron them, it's just really nice to sleep on. That's that, right. So we're going to put these across the top of the bag. Now imagine this is where the, um, the cord's going to go through, so don't put it too near the top, otherwise your bag's going to look a bit odd. So I'd put that about there, which is, say three inches down, no, a bit higher. Let me measure that, that looks about two inches, two inches from the top and evenly to each side. I'll tell you what I'm going to do first, just sew over those ends. Not across the long bits, just across the short bits. Just to stop the ends lifting up when I'm pulling the, um, the cord through. And this one, and then we'll sew that in place. Whoops, so I was reading your comments then, I went completely off piste. Uh, and there, right, and then these go on here. Um, so again, two inches from the top in the centre. So let's have a couple of peas in here. Um, Sarah, if you have any uh, calico, a, a twirl, just cheap fabric, any kind of cheap fabric, an old sheet would be absolutely fine to make a twirl. Um, calico is ideal. If you can find some kind of really cheap fabric in the same kind of weight as the fabric that you're using would be ideal. So you can actually get some quite stiff calico as well, but it's, it's normally generally very cheap fabric. Um, but if you've got an, anything, tablecloth, bit of curtaining, curtain lining, anything like that, you just want some fabric that it doesn't matter if you waste. And what, what's quite nice with calico, I know it creases quite easily, which, which is sometimes quite a nice look, like linen, I forgot about the coffee. Um, if your twirl turns out well, then you can still wear it. Rose, I'm using an Elna. I will not be using an Elna next week because my daughter wants this one back again. So 
so I don't know what I should be using. I do have um, some machines, some machines, a machine that I haven't used yet. It's a Singer, so I might have, I might have a go with that next week. I was um, I was given it years ago, but I've never actually used it. Right, let's snip this. And I'm just sewing down both long slides, not across the end. So I'm making a channel for the drawstring to go through. And then we'll sew another one on the back. And I'm just going to refresh the website again because I'm sure there's more than Olive Ann on the website watching. Let me just have a look who's there. Thank you. Um, hello, Re. Welcome along. Just much if you're late. These videos stay here forever anyway. Um, Susie, you've missed me ditty. I, I did. I did a ditty earlier. You're gonna have to watch it back again. It's only a little ditty, but I thought it was quite a nice one. Oh, just just Olive on the website. So we have that. So then we need to put the second channel onto the back of the bag. in the same position, so two inches from the top and centrally. So I'm just lining these up so I know that they're in the same position. Make sure it's nice and straight. So we'll have a couple of pins in there. I'm not sure which one I've got, Sheila, to be honest. I've had it for years. In fact, I'd, it's one of those things I'd forgotten all about it until we were um, trying to tidy up, ready for moving, if we ever do. And there it was, forgotten all about it. So we'll, we'll give it a go. All right, so again, just sewing down the two long sides, not across the end bits. I did, I know, I don't think I did a ditty last Saturday, Susie. Did I do a ditty last Saturday? I can't remember. Ciao, Miriam from Italy. Welcome along. Okay, so going just along both sides. And why didn't you cut there? My thread snipper didn't snip threads and then I'll trim off any loose bits that are dangling in the way and then we'll sew it together. Right, so let's sew the tops of the lining to the tops of the outside of the bag. Hi Dotty in New Zealand. Oh, a vintage Jones machine. <gasps> That's a nice idea. I've, um, I've got a vintage Jones. It's one of my favourites. It's a green one. Um, in fact, I've got quite a few vintage sewing machines. There's probably about 20 knocking about the house. They're going to be fun to move. Um, and I've never actually tried to use any of them, so I don't know whether they're workable or not. I just love the look of them. They're all cast iron ones. But I've, I've got a few of the single ones, you know, just the, the black. Um, in fact, one of my fabric ranges coming out this year is based on those and the designs that are on them. I've got a few from the 1920s, and in the 1920s it was very fashionable. Um, uh, Egyptian prints were very fashionable because that's, of course, when they discovered Tutankhamun's tomb. Um, I think I'm just about to run out of bobbin thread. I think I just did run out. Well, that was good timing. Um, so I've come up with a fabric design based on that and I brought a spare bobbin up with me and I don't know what I've done with it um, so yeah I've got a few of those but I like the coloured ones or the machines that are a little bit ugly because they tend to be a bit rarer because nobody wants them 
Yes, I do. I do like my collection of sewing machines. Right, I've heard of Necky, but I haven't actually used one. Right, so it's again sew across the top of these. Oh, a vintage treadle, Eleanor. Oh, I think I've, I've told you before, one of my, you know, when your parents' friends that you used to call auntie and uncle, but weren't really. Um, when we used to go and visit, my auntie had um, a treadle sewing machine, which I, I didn't use when I was only little, but I can remember sitting there with my feet on the treadle, just doing this, and it was so relaxing. Hmm. I wonder if we've got room for one when we move. Oh, a Blue Jones machine. Oh, how wonderful. Janet's got a vintage treadle. Oh, do hang on to them. Thank you, Kathy. Borrowing my books from the library. Um, so that's what we've got. Two pieces like this. Obviously, only one with a pocket on the front. And then we're going to take the both of them and sew right sides together. Now I like to start from the seam or at least pin the seam in place because I, I really want to make sure these match and I'm going to put the seam allowance towards the lining. So match the seams up here so we'll have a pin in there. And then the same on this side, so match at the seams. Lining, um, seam allowance towards the lining and stick a pin in. Jones machine feet. Oh, Kathy learned to sew on a treadle machine. Oh, lovely. Um, right, let's sew all the way around. It helps if you pin two pieces together, not just to stick a pin in one piece. Then we'll sew all the way around, but I'm going to leave a turning gap in the bottom of the lining. So very much like making any kind of line bag at the moment. So here we go. So a lot of straight line sewing. So talk amongst yourselves, if you like, for a while. Do you know what? I'm, you, you've kind of inspired me a little bit there. I think I will look at seeing whether they work or not. And I suppose there must be people around who can service them, still, if they don't work. So let me know if you've heard of anybody in the Midlands that does that. I might be able to keep him busy. Or her. Right, down to the bottom. Wow. A surprise Bernina. What a thoughtful husband. So I'm not going to box the bottom of this one because um, we, we tend to do that a lot so I think you know how to do it but if you wanted to do that oh actually we could cut the corners out and do it that way maybe we'll do that so if you wanted to leave this flat you can do if you wanted to box the bottom and make it a little bit more roomy you can do that as well I think I will got time haven't we So what are you going to be doing for the rest of the weekend? What's plans? I shall be in the office tomorrow. I have um, five projects to design and write up about for, you know, the, the book that I did, um, the Half Yard Summer Compilation. So it's a gathering of um, projects from all of my Half Yard books with five new projects. They're putting together a half yard spring collection. So there's lots of spring type projects from other half yard books, but we need five new projects by next week. So that's what I've been doing yesterday and today. Along with the half yard club um, July project. So that's all in the bag now. So keep him busy. 
Oh, Betty worked for a brother selling knitting machines. They do, so do knitting machines. My sister used to have a knitting machine. She could knock up a sweater in a matter of minutes. Um, Lisa's just ordered the book. We've got some books on sale on the website, I think. Don't forget if you're ordering um, a book from my website and you want it signing personally, then do let me know. I tend to scribble my name in all of them anyway, but if you want it signing to somebody, then just send me a message when you place your order. And don't forget if you do order and you're a member of the Half Yard Club, you get your 10% discount. Um, which is, just to remind you, if you go to the Half Yard Club, if you remember, and go to About Me, that's where you're going to find your discount code. I've had a couple of questions this morning about that. Okay, so I'm going to square off the base this way. But I'm going to, just, just a little one, I think. I'm going to go an inch and a half from the corner. I'm going to go two inches from the corner. And just draw a square. And then cut that out. And the same with the lining. We should be getting these scissors back in stock again next week, by the way. Sold out again. And then I'm just going to use one of these squares as a template to do the same from the lining piece. Binders in finger. Really, Linda, that's not too far from me. And into this one. Okay, then let's pull these open and sew straight across. Can you hear the church bells chiming? Right. So I just tend to fold the seams in opposite directions, so I'm not worried about pressing seams open on something like this. And snip. And the same with this one. So pull that out and squish. Like so. I'm glad you like those scissors. They, they, they will be. I mean, when I get some back on the website again, they're seven ninety nine. Um, they're core bond. And not a brand that I've been too familiar with, but I'm actually so impressed with them. I'm, I'm, I'm working with them. Um, so I've been filming for their Amazon shop. Just information about all of their projects. You get my voice and you get my hands, but you don't get my face. Um, but yeah, they sent me some of their products to test. And I, I, I'm honest, I don't get paid for doing anything like that. So if they send me something and I don't like it, I'm quite happy to say so. I was just amazed when I realised that they're only £7.99. I expected £27.99. Nice to get a bargain. Anyway, we haven't got any. We'll be back in stock next week. Okay, so we've got this. Let's pull the whole thing through the gap and turn it the right side out. No, Jane, it's just the church bells. They, they chime on the hour. You kind of get used to it. Um, our bedroom, actually, is next to the church. And uh, when we first moved in, it was like, I know what time it is, again. But you get used to it. Um, so the opening closed. So pull the two sides of that away from each other. And so straight across. <laughs> Do you know, I, I don't know what it is about my voice, Jita. Um, <laughs> I thought it was quite odd with the, like, with the estate agents that we're using um, to sell the house, considering I've never met them because you tend not to these days. 
um, if, if I phone up and say, hello, can I speak to Emma? They go, yes, Mrs. A real name. Um, without me even saying anything. I thought, they just, I understand I have a, a very strong accent or a very silly voice, I think. Every hour, Anne chimes every blooming hour but you do get used to it so because I, I, I cut a little bit from the um, outside fabric I've now got a board around the top which I think really finishes it off doesn't it so that's what we're looking like I'm going to sew around the top just to hold those layers in place here we go Sort them out, Lisa. We're sewing, aren't we? That's, we're sewing and having a nice, like you said, light-hearted little chat. So, see what I'm doing there? I'm just sewing, I'm sewing around the blue bit. Just to hold all that in place. All the way around. And then we'll put the cord through it. I think that's really going to finish it off. We don't have cord on the website at the moment. Looking into it. Almost there. Okay. So let's put the cord in. Let's have a little bit of coffee because it's going cold. Lost my mouse. Um, hi, Maya from India. Okay. Tidy those away. So I will need <laughs> two pieces of cord long enough to wrap all the way around and hang over a little bit at the side um, like so Lisa's woken up at stupid o'clock with a, a neighbour yelling Alexa two pieces like this my um, son who's at home with us works on the overnight shift at Tidal World he's a floor manager um, so he comes home from work about um, half past three in the morning and he's quite often said he can't get to sleep because the birds are so loud it, we've got um, a wisteria right underneath his window and there's nests and all sorts in there and um, you could use ribbon absolutely fine a crocheted rope would be really nice as well so yeah a bird song keeps him awake <laughs> I'm just going to tie a knot in the end of this and use a safety pin to thread it through tying a knot so it doesn't all unravel when I'm um, pulling the pin through. Oh, spiked myself a few times today. So let's push that in there. 4 a.m. in Phoenix. So are you daylight yet, Susie? Right. See, I don't know what happened to YouTube on Wednesday. It, um, it just wouldn't connect. I don't know what I was doing wrong but um, I, I couldn't get a connection at all, so we decided just to carry on without it. Pull that through. To redo it and shut down. What was that, Chris? Um, is YouTube okay now? Because it's okay on my, um, on my screen at the moment. Right, let's pull that through. Keep going. And then the second one's going to be going around in the opposite direction. Pitch dark, the birds aren't even awake yet. Oh dear. So that comes through here like that. And I'm just going to undo that knot. and tie the two ends together. I just noticed that was lifting up, need to sew that back down again. Obviously didn't reverse stitch enough. Okay. 
Does that burn in the ends or a with a, a thread zapper work on cord as thick as this though? I'd have thought to set it on fire, wouldn't it? Not tried, can't really say. Just need to, oh, can I do that? Yes, I can do that. I'm just going to sew the ends of that channel down. Not through the cord, obviously. Valerie, such an easy job, um, easy project for a beginner, this one. It really is. All right, so that's that. And then this cord, we're going to thread through in the opposite direction. So where I've knotted this one, we're going to start from this end. I know I've not seen a thread zapper before. Blue band works, doesn't it? It's, uh, it finishes it off nicely, methinks. It's a nice big bag as well, and I think it just goes to show what you can do with um, well, what is a metre of fabric. So if you, if you weren't watching earlier, this is actually one of the perfect pair bundles we've got on the website. So there's half a metre of patterned fabric and half a metre of plain. So if you've got half a metre of each of two fabrics, that's all you need to make this. And this is probably the biggest size that you can make from two half metres. So you could probably make um, two smaller bags, half the size, probably. Of course you could. Thanks, Carol. I'm glad you like it. Oh, buttonholes we were going to do. I forgot about the buttonholes. Must do that. We've got to show us how to put zip tabs in. Let me write it down. Zip tabs. Right, so it's a little bit of a, a squeeze inside here now because I've got two rows of um, cord. Sally Ann, I don't have time, Sally Ann. I do um, smaller patchwork pieces, but um, most of my sewing time is taken up with projects for the Half Yard Club, for magazines, um, for YouTube, for books. So now a patchwork quilt would. You know, Put me out of work really so no I don't do that right just keep feeding this through it's a little bit stiff in there because I've got the knot traveling through next to the rope so when I take that knot off at the end that's going to be fine come on through come out and then we'll have a look at some buttonholes. <laughs> That's better, come on. Things always perform when you talk to them sternly, don't they? Get out of there. Get back in again. Um, f you could use four fat quarters, um, but you would have, if, you, if they're from a fat quarter pack, you'd have different fabrics for each piece. So one side like that would take up most of a fat quarter. But that could look fine because your fat quarters are obviously going to match. Um, yes, Karen, everything came from the two half metres for the pocket and the flap and the channels. And there was about that much fabric left over at the end as well. So there's plenty of fabric in there. How to use the automatic threading thingle, a, th a thingle, a threading thingle. I can do that in a minute. Needle threader. Right, I have to write everything down else I completely forget. <laughs> and then I lose my book. Right, come on through. And do that. And do not. This is quarter of an inch cord. Um, I thought it, because I'm using fabric with anchors on, I thought it looked quite nautical with the cord. Um, but as we were saying earlier, if you wanted to use a, a finer cord, string, um, ribbon, absolutely fine. We are done. So all you need to do then is to pull the cords away from each other. And there's your drawstring bag. And of course with the cord you can then hang that on the back of the door if you're going to use it for storage. Um, so that's that. I hope you've enjoyed it. Just got a thread there. So let, let me show you over here. So that's it open, nice and roomy. I was thinking pyjama case, maybe somewhere to put your reading glasses or I don't know, your teeth, whatever you use, <laughs> whatever comes out at night. 
um, and hang it over the end of the bed or the back of a door and it makes nice nice storage I think and um, the waterproof lining I can't remember who said that but that's a nice do idea as well so you've got a nice big wash bag but I like the pocket idea on the front don't you you've got somewhere to store things right um, now buttonholes first can't remember who wanted buttonholes I'm afraid I didn't write that down so this is a one step buttonhole st uh, stitch so on your sewing machine it will look like that as the button um, some machines let me have a look in here because I don't use these very often will have a whole variety of different types of buttonholes personal preference really whatever you think would work um, you tend to find the oval ones are used on uh, ladies blouses with finer fabrics and um, the keyhole buttonholes just different shapes um, tend to use on things like coats or buttons that you have a shank and the shank of the button kind of sits in the loop at the bottom and um, these are buttonholes for stretch fabrics so I'm just going to use the basic square one or rectangular one that's at the front here so your buttonhole foot will look something like this and a one-step buttonhole measures the size of the button at the back. Now, I wasn't too prepared, so I don't have a button. So I'm just going to put an empty bobbin case in there. So that closes over like that. Now, you, you'll have noticed when you move this up and down to the size of the button, this moves here, obviously. And that is going to be the size of your buttonhole. So your buttonhole in general is going to be about an eighth of an inch bigger than the size of your button, so you can get the button through the hole. Um, this is really important as well because this gap here or this bar here is going to gauge when your sewing machine turns around and comes back in the opposite direction. So these type of feet are snap-on feet so that one drops off and this one drops on. So there's the bar here where your new foot will drop onto and then your needle goes through the hole at the front there. So let, whoa, come back here, let's just drop you on here. Four step buttonholes work in a completely different way. So again, if I can find, <laughs> that's my T-Rex scarf, still got it down here. If you can find a, um, if I can find a four step buttonhole foot for Wednesday, um, we'll have a look at that then. Okay, I've just got a piece of stabiliser, so I'll explain this in just a second. And I'm just looking for a piece of plain fabric so you can see what I'm doing. That will do, and I'm just going to iron it because I can't bear to work on creased up fabric. Helen, I can do, yes. I will put those measurements on underneath. Um, maybe later on this afternoon because I've got, I've got a bit of work to do when I finish now. Right, let's just... I love the smell of it. Right, so I've just got a little bit of, of um, seeded cotton, that will do. Okay, it is advisable, particularly on finer fabrics, to put a little bit of tear away um, stabiliser behind, um, behind your buttonhole. Just like when you are free motion embroidering, so I'm just looking to see if I've got any. 505 spray which seems to have dropped on the floor and I can't move um, with a finer fabric very much like when you're doing um, embroidery or, or if you're working with an embroidery machine your stitches are going to be very close together and, and quite short so it can weaken the fabric and it can make it buckle sometimes as well so just a piece of stabiliser on the back uh, a tear away stabiliser is absolutely fine um, will help to stop the fabric from puckering as you're doing that when you see a marking on um, a pattern for a buttonhole it'll look like that so if you're making a blouse or a shirt or something then you'll have a whole row of buttons that look like this um, to ensure that my buttonholes are the right size and in the right place I normally stitch out a buttonhole on a scrap piece of fabric and literally cut it out and then I can place it where I want it to be um, so I've got my that behind there. Let's just see if I've got a bit of a glue stick would help. I think I've taken that to the house as well. I have. Um, 
and it also helps you understand where your machine starts and stops. So most machines will start at the bottom and then work your way backwards. So have a look through the hole in the middle of your foot before you put your fabric under there and see where it's going to line up. Now one more thing to do before we start sewing, importantly, remember the two bars that stick out here that I said will gauge the size of the buttonhole? You'll have a pull down, that's the needle, a pull down bar on your machine. It's normally got a picture of a buttonhole on it and that needs to sit in between those two points. Can you see what I'm doing there? So when your foot goes backwards and forwards, it'll touch that bar and that's a sensor that allows you to turn, uh, allows the machine to turn around. So it's really important you pull this down. On a lot of computerized machines, if you don't, you'll have an error come up. It might say BL, button lever. So you need to make sure it's, it's pulled down and it's in between those two bits of the foot that stick out then you can put your fabric underneath here and look through the hole at the bottom to see where your buttonhole is going to start. Select your buttonhole stitch and then start to sew. Now your machine will go um, sew backwards first and then zigzag coming forwards and then it'll do what's called a bar tack at the end so it's just a few zigzag stitches going in um, just over the top of each other. Then it'll do the second side as a straight stitch going backwards and zigzag coming forwards again and then automatically stop. This isn't the same with the four step buttonhole, that's completely different. So when it comes to an end now, my, my foot is still on the foot pedal but the machine has come to a stop. So let me take that out and show you. Now the reason the buttonhole goes in a straight line on, on both sides is to strengthen the buttonhole and that also helps to stabilize it so that again helps the stitches to stay in place. So there is my perfect little buttonhole. Then you can take a quick and pick down the center um, and, um, and undo that. If you're a bit worried about cutting through the stitches on the end put a pin across each end here so you don't actually cut through it. Um, then what I like to do personally is to literally cut out the buttonhole so this would be on a scrap piece of fabric of the same fabric that I'm using. And then I know that's going to be the size of the buttonhole where I'm going to put it. So I know that if I start sewing here, that's going to be the length of the buttonhole. And considering I'm only using a bobbin, which looks really tiny, the buttonhole looks very big. But again, it's about an eighth of an inch bigger than the size of the button, so it's going to fit through properly. This also helps if you're making um, a bag flap and you want a button on it. So if I wanted to centre this, pretend that's a bag flap and I need the buttonhole to be evenly across here. I know that when I place my buttonhole that I've cut out on there, if I start sewing the buttonhole from here, it's going to end there. And I can position this literally straight across the centre of where, I'm, um, where I want the buttonhole to be. Because unless you know the perfect finished size, it's likely that it's not going to be in absolutely the perfect position. So that's the way that I do it. Um, so I hope that's helped or explained a little bit. Let me just show you needle threaders while we're here. So I'll try and do a four step on Wednesday. So I'm just going to see if I can zoom in. Apologies for if I wobble a little bit. I just want to try and get quite close on my machine. That'll do. So let's just undo the thread. So your needle threader, now some of these when you pull them down stay in place like mine does. Some of them you'll have to hold this down. Your needle needs to be in the uppermost position. So again if you've got a computerized sewing machine, go up down with the needle and that will take the needle into the right position. If you've got, if you don't have um, a machine with a, an up down button function, then just wind the, the hand wheel at the side of your machine until it's in the highest place. And then gently pull this down. Now basically, there's a very fine, it's almost like um, fuse wire hook in the middle of these two little things here, little, little forks and um, that hook will go through the eye of the needle. So it's tiny, I can't even see it. Then you take your thread, whoops, <laughs> I've not done it this way before, underneath this bar, this is, most machines are like this, some are slightly different, and then in between those two prongs, 
And if you hold the thread up slightly at the back and loosely, then um, that helps. And then when you take the lever back up again, that hook pulls a loop of thread through the eye of the needle and you just pull the loop through and that's threaded. I think needle threaders are invaluable and they're one of those things that if I'm buying a new sewing machine I will make sure that it has a needle threader, particularly if you're um, using thicker threads or um, fibrous threads like metallic threads that can be very difficult to thread on their own. Um, just a quick word though, remember you, you've got like a, the, the prong that comes through like this with, <laughs> with a little hook in the centre. That hook is so tiny it bends really really easily. Um, so if if your if your needle threader isn't threading, if you pull that thread across and it's just not catching, if you can take a magnifying glass and look at that little hook, it might have gone to one side. That's why I was saying how important it is to have your needle in the uppermost position because if it's not in the right position, when the needle threader comes down, or if you're really uh, you know vigorous with that needle threader, that little hook can bash against the needle and twist. It bends to one side. So all you need to do is to take a knife or the end of a screwdriver or something small like that, very carefully bend it back to the centre. It's as simple as that. If you've happened to have broke it off, I've never done that, um, your sewing machine repair people should be able to fit another one for you. So I hope that's explained. Um, bye Janet, thank you, thank you for being here. Lovely. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to pop off because I've got lots of work to do. So I will try and put the measurements on the web. Uh, sorry, on the I'll do it on the website, on Facebook and on YouTube. If you wanted to make up the bag as well, but it might be later on today because I've got rather a lot to do. Um, I shall see you. Oh right, I've never done that myself. I've never broke one to be honest, Denise, but that's nice to know. I'll see you again on Wednesday, so hopefully on Facebook, YouTube and on the website um, at two o'clock in the afternoon UK time. Otherwise I'll be back again next Saturday at 11 o'clock in the morning again. So hopefully it's a lovely sunny day wherever you are. You can go outside and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy the rest of your weekend anyway. You stay safe and I shall see you again very soon. Thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Bye bye.